to follow along. We'll be in James in chapter 5, starting at verse 13, and we'll be in the New Living Translation as we have been uh, quite frequently lately. Verse 13. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you've committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy and perfect word. Our passage is clearly telling us that the source of all goodness in the world is clearly God. He is the one who is able to do so much. And so when there are hardships, when there is sickness, he is the one that we should go to and ask for prayers, particularly if there's something that is, you know, causing us pain and suffering. We can go to the Father who loves us and wishes to care for us. Because we think about it, right? Has there ever been a better moments in your life than when you got answered prayer? When there was some you know, need of healing and then you, you got to see it. Or there was something that you thought you could never be forgiven of and you found that forgiveness. There was a relationship that was broken and God brought those things back together. And we give God all the honor and all the praise and all the glory when he does such things. Our passage mentions Elijah, who was a great man of faith, right? One of the greatest he prayed and for three and a half years it didn't rain and when he prayed again it did what a miracle god is still in the miracle game he still does miracles miracles happen right when people trust in god and they walk in union with god's will miracles don't happen as a result of a person's will they happen as a result of god's will and that a person joins in with god's will and elijah was able to do it not because of him but because of god Every week, as we did today, right, we shared praises, some of them big and some of them small, but we gave God all the honor and all the glory for the things that he has done that are good in all of our lives. We get to hear testimonies and sharing about stories and things that he has done, about answer to prayer, about people we know coming to see Jesus, about when God was there for us at various moments, and we celebrate those times. But we are also all aware that there are moments when people aren't healed, right? When relationships seem to be broken, jobs can't be found, and people we love won't accept Jesus, right? The Bible's full of times people prayed, and they didn't get the thing that was on their heart's desire. My guess is that no matter how fervently maybe you've prayed for something, God answered those prayers in a way that is not the thing that you had wished for. And there's probably moments then that we also could echo the words that, that David said in Psalm 22, verse 1 and 2, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, but my God, you don't answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. It doesn't feel very good to be in that position, does it? To be in the valley where something is wrong. Maybe we find out something is medically wrong with us or... Um, we have someone in our relation, someone in our family, we're very close to them. We want them to know the Lord, but they just won't. Maybe we have some sort of pain and anxiety that just won't go away. I guess is that for many of us, we've had those moments, right? When we really wanted a miracle, but it didn't happen, at least in the way and the timing that we thought it should. And when that happens, sometimes we get upset. Maybe first we get upset at ourselves and sometimes maybe even we get upset at God sometimes, don't we? We start to question him. Maybe God isn't as good as I thought he was. Maybe, seriously, we should stop, right? Pause and think. Hasn't God been good to us? Don't let those lies come into our head. 
Think about it. Just stop and pause right now. Think about times that God has been good to you when you poured out your heart to Him and He has responded in mercy and grace. Don't forget that. Don't make the lies and the father of lies make you forget the times when God has been good. He's good all the time and He has been good to us. So then we're probably still thinking, well then, okay, he has been good. But there are times when I wanted something so bad and it didn't happen. Why were some people's prayers seem to be answered and others weren't answered in the way that they wanted? Well, I don't know all the reasons. The Bible isn't always clear in totality for those reasons. But it does talk in our passage about one potential barrier, right? And that barrier is an unconfessed sin. Sometimes we have disobedience in our lives. We have things that we've done that pull us away from our relationship with God. And if we're not in harmony with God, how can we echo what God wants us to do in our lives? And that's not to say God isn't up there being like, I told you people what to do. You didn't do it. Now I'm getting back at you because I will not listen to your prayers. It's more like this, right? God's always extending his hand. He wants to bring resurrection. Uh, res, res, he wants to restore our relationship. He wants to make things right again in our lives. But we're the ones that step back. We're the ones that try to hide from God. We run from God. And that doesn't work. Instead, come clean to God. If there's something you have disobeyed God about, just go to him. Say you're sorry. And he will guide you gently back into right standing to him with a deep closeness to him because he loves us. He wants to bring us close. He doesn't treat us like a boss and, and, and a client. He doesn't treat us like that. Like Jesus said in John 15, 15, I don't call you servants. The servant doesn't know his master's business. Again, I call you friends for everything I learned from the father I've made known to you. I bring you in. You know what I know. I'm sharing it with you because I love you, because God has a plan. And part of that plan is that we pray to him and that the result of prayer is that he is working in our lives to change and transform us. Because when we're honest with God and we're open and we're seeking him in relationship, he's going to guide us because that's who he is. Because really, I mean, we're all like a big chunk of wood. Some of us are bigger chunks of wood than others. Um, but when God looks at that big old chunk of wood, he sees what it can be. He's always seen past it. He's saying, if you let me have access to you, I will chisel and I will sand and I will shape this into the masterpiece I always knew was within this wood. And I am always at work to doing that. But we have to let him because he's not going to force you. You have to allow it for him to work. Sometimes I hear that people say from time to time, God, God really wants people to be healthy and wealthy. And, and you know, he, he, he loves people. He wants to answer the things that are in our hearts. But is that really the motivation? He does to a certain degree want us to have health. But doesn't the Bible also say in Hebrews 9.27, people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. You see, we're not going to live forever. All of our bodies are in a continual state of breaking down, right? Most of us probably don't need to know that, right? I see Helen smiling, laughing. She knows, like, there's problems in happening, right? Our bodies are not as functional, especially the older we get, the more that we know that, right? That there's going to be a time when healing and prayers for healing aren't always answered because there's going to be a time when we pass out of this world, a time when we will end our life here. And so we say that to note that we believe in the power of God to heal, right? We know that. God is always healing. He's always good. But every day people die, right? Good people die. Bad people die. Jesus died. Sure, he came back to life, but he didn't stay here forever, right? His hope wasn't to come back and live in this world. His hope was in a resurrected into a new world. And so is ours. This physical life is temporal. Even all the people that were ever healed in the Bible, and we celebrate those great miracles, we can't go up to them and talk to them today because one day they died. As we will all die. That doesn't mean we don't pray for healing because sometimes God heals. But whether he heals us or not, he's good. Because the awareness and our goal of life isn't to just simply live as long as we possibly can. The goal of life is to live for Him and then be with Him for all eternity. 
Because God wants us to pray as Jesus taught us to pray, right? Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done. Not our will, God's will. Prayer is about seeking God. It's not about seeking more of me. And sometimes we'll get a miracle. And sometimes healing will happen. And sometimes relationships will be restored. And sometimes someone will come to Jesus. And when those things happen, we celebrate them. And we rejoice in them. And we know that they are beautiful things. But miracles are miracles because they are the exception to the rule. Sometimes God intervenes and he does something miraculous. And other times he does not. Look at the story, I think, of a... Peter and James, right? Both in jail here, right? In this story, both were great disciples, followers. In fact, they were there at the transfiguration. They were in the inner circle of three people that Jesus sometimes would bring with him to do certain things. And yet, James dies. He's the first disciple to die. And Peter's freed. Well, does that mean James didn't pray hard enough? He didn't believe hard enough? He wasn't good enough? No. Look at his brother John. He was the last disciple. Writing the book of Revelation. Does that mean John was better than all the other disciples? Because he lived the longest? No. Of course not. That's silly, right? God is good. And the greatest miracle of all isn't the removal of pain or suffering or that we live for a long time. Those are wonderful blessings and we celebrate and we thank God for them. But the real and the most important miracle of all is that we get to know God, that he changes us, he transforms us, he offers us forgiveness. He offers us to know him and offers us an eternal home. He offers us to be part of his family because he took our sins and the punishment for our sins upon himself. Like Paul said, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Because we leave this world and to do the thing that he always intended for us to do, to be with him. We want everyone to join us in eternity, right? We, we don't want anyone left behind. It was God's will that he loves all people, but he also gave them a free will as he gave all of us free will. We have opportunities to accept or to reject anything that God asks or tells us to do, right? But take heart in this. God loves the person that you love, even when they haven't accepted him yet. Think about it. He's known them a lot longer than you since the dawn of time, before the earth was even formed. He knew he was going to make them. He knew all the things about them and he knew that he loved them and he had a plan for their lives and he desired them to know him. So take heart that God cares about the person that you care about. He does, he infinitely does and he wants them to know. And so we do, we pray, we pray that God's wisdom and discernment would come upon them, that they would choose to know him and accept him. And then that we would continue to have courage and discernment about how to share him with the people who are around us so that they can know and serve God's purposes and that we can know and serve God's purposes. You know, sometimes, right, when we pray, sometimes we pray opposite things, you know, couple, I remember a few weeks ago, Mary was praying for rain and thanking God for all this rain. And I was like, oh boy, I hope it doesn't rain because I have, you know, stuff going on at the church, right? So could God answer, you know, is God going to say, well, at Mary's house, it's going to rain and a couple blocks later, it won't rain so that this other activity can occur. Or maybe Bob's like, well, I got a pool party going on. I want it to be pretty hot. And then Mike's like, well, I thought maybe we'd go out sledding down a hill so maybe god you can make it snow i mean this would be it'd be crazy right if everyone's weather request was constantly answered right i mean we know how silly that is right and when applied to weather right well did you ever think about how that plans out in all aspects of life when you're praying like oh god i hope that there's a parking spot for me and well what about the other guy trying to park you know what i mean like they're praying so all of these things right God knows what the best thing is, okay? So we need to learn to be content and happy with whatever he gives us. We can pray and we can ask and we petition and we pour out our hearts, but whether we get what we wanted or we don't get what we wanted, we rejoice with God because he gave us another day 
And it doesn't matter if it's rainy or sunny or it's snowing or hot. Because we get to be with God. And He has blessed us with If we go in the attitude, this can be a wonderful day to know and to serve Him. Not because it went the way I wanted, because it was going to go the way God wanted. So pray for more of His will in our lives. And who knows? God does care about the things that are on your heart. I'm not saying God doesn't care. He does care, but he wants to reshape us to make sure that we care about the things that are most important, right? So that we have wisdom and discernment, that we can trust God, that we would echo, you know, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. They would echo in and through us in our relationships. And then doors are open to us in the way in which we perceive the world. You know, sometimes I think we get pretty high and mighty for people that I think don't even know how to get the internet to work, right? Are you trying to get the TV to do this thing? Won't do, do, do. And yet then we're going to sit there and be like, God, you messed up the world? You can't even get a TV to work. Give God some credit. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes did we ever think maybe our prayers aren't answered because God had something better in mind. That sometimes he hasn't given you what you wanted because he knows our best interest. Just think for a minute, what if you got everything you ever prayed for? Think back, some of those stupid things when you were little that you prayed for that you wanted. Where would you be in the world? What would you be doing? But God had a better plan. You see, we have a very limited view. God has a real big view. And He's shaping us as we talked about last week as we pray. It's not wrong to pray for anything that we feel is on our heart, but to also listen in prayer. And we pray for something, and then God comes along and He'll say, wait, or let's change that, or He changes our heart, He changes our mind about how and what to pray about, because He keeps shaping us, because prayer is an eternal dialogue. It never ends if you know Him. It's you talking and listening and then sharing back to God. And as you're doing that, He's reshaping the things that you desire, the things you're praying for, the things that are important to you. Because God's secret is He often wants to even give us something He wants us to be patient. Just because it didn't happen today doesn't mean it's not going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't mean that when you pray today that something isn't going to happen better, right? Because just because God says wait doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Keep praying and trust God. Because he's in control. He's always good. And we can ask him why. Sometimes people, I think, give kind of bad advice. They say, don't ever ask God a question. People in the Bible are often asking questions to God. Job, Jeremiah, David, Abraham, Moses, just to name a few. Now, they didn't always like what God had to say. When they asked this question, they didn't like the answer they got because they were hoping for something else. But God answered the question. It's okay to ask questions. It's always good to ask more information. Why didn't I get the job I wanted? Why doesn't this person like me anymore? Blah, 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 blah. All these questions we have. Because God will give us an answer. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. At least when we leave this world, He will. But it's often in seeking that we find. So ask questions. God's fine with it. And keep praying. When it doesn't seem like it's working, keep praying. Because God is always at work. Remember, prayer is not to wear God out so you change His mind to do what you want. It's to be in relationship because as you pray, He'll change your desires to shape to His desires. Because He is good. We don't want to just be people then that talk about prayer, right? We want to be people who actually are doing prayer. So that's why in a couple minutes, um, if you have any concerns, burdens, things, you can come up. So in just a little bit, Robin and Linda will come up. They'll play our last song. And if anyone wants to receive prayer, you can come up. Uh, Sue, our one elder, can't be here today, but uh, Luann is here with us and she'll join me up. And if anyone else feels called to lead to come up and pray, you're more than welcome to come and, and pray with anyone who wants to receive prayer. If you have pain or suffering or sickness, or maybe that pain is financial or emotional or spiritual. 
Maybe you just don't know what to do. Maybe there's some unconfessed sin in your life. You can hand it over to God. Whatever's on your heart, God can take it. Again, it's not because of the process of anything special in the elements themselves. The specialness is always in our obedience to what God is asking us to do. It shows that we love Him if we obey Him. So if there is anything, don't hesitate, don't hold back. Let us pray. Father God, when we don't get what we want, help us to stop focusing on ourselves and help us to see the world from your much larger and vast perspective. When the wisdom and logic of this world fell us, help to ever rely more on your wisdom and logic. And if you're speaking to any person here who needs prayer, help us to come before you seeking it. That we should call forth the elders of the church to come and pray that they can be anointed in the name of the Lord. That if you're speaking to any hearts that are here today, especially to a person that may never have known you as Savior or has perhaps drifted away and they no longer serve you as Lord. Lord, we pray that if any of us have an unconfessed sin, that you would pull us, just even push us up the aisle, that we may know the power of your forgiveness. And if there is anyone today who suffers in some means of pain, whatever that pain is, that you would wish to touch them today. We pray these things in the name of our only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.